So we're going to start the Waitley School Committee public hearing for the proposed fiscal year 22 budget at 601. Okay, and the first thing is to approve the minutes of our last meeting, March 2nd. Do I hear? Actually, you know, the first thing you have to do, it is the, it is the hearing on the budget. So you're going to open up the hearing on the budget. Oh, okay. You're gonna, we're going to discuss, Shelly's going to give the quick overview of the budget. Then you have any questions regarding the budget. Then you close the hearing on the budget. And then you open the school committee, um, the business of the school committee, which is to vote the budget and to do the minutes and such. Does that make okay. sense? It just has to be very formal because it's a legal process that you do it. Sure. Now. Okay. So do I have to get a vote for that? I'm going to. Nope. Shelly is just going to tell us what the budget okay. is. <laughs> okay. She's going to go through the basically in brief what we did with the. You know, I think where Bob was trying to say to the, the select boards and the finance committees that we've already discussed this budget several times, and then we went to them and discussed it as well. And then we're having a hearing now where we should have been kind of doing it when we did it with the select board and finance committee, because we're going to discuss the budget again, yet we've already discussed it for us. But right. legally, we have to do it. It was posted in the paper, all this other kind of stuff. So okay. Shelly's going to do a quick run through, um, and then there'll be any questions on the budget, um, and then it shouldn't be that long. All right, sound good? All right, shall we? All right. Okay, uh, Darius, do you want to share or do you want me to share the, my screen? I got to set to go, I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Uh, so he's just going to pull up the document that gives our short summary here, as Darius uh, explained, we did already present in pretty detailed uh, presentation to the select board. So this is really just a summary for public tonight. Uh, so we built the budget for FY22 with a level service approach. So all of our existing staffing programs and services were replicated from FY21. Uh, we took into consideration any contractual obligations for teachers and IAs. There is a 2% COLA built in. And then any step increases for anyone who's changing either columns because they've advanced their degree or uh, anyone who is stepping on the salary schedule. Uh, I just lost you. There you go. Um, so then we take a look at increases for non-union staff. So that includes um, support staff, uh, secretaries, custodians, um, food service, uh, central office, principal, any other administrators. Uh, we look at those pieces and then we analyze the non-salary accounts as well. So we look at a three-year history to see if any of our non-salary expense accounts need to be adjusted up or down and we make those changes accordingly. Uh, and we also build in adjustments for operating related expenses such as utilities and insurances. We also look at classroom sizes and projections of enrollment to determine if we need additional staffing for the upcoming year. And then we look at our revolving funds to see um, if those accounts that have been paying expenses in the prior year can continue to pay expenses with the anticipated revenues that we're gonna bring in. Um, so Waitley does not have any new staffing. There are no major expenses for next year. Um, we're pretty much looking at salaries and wages being the primary source for our increase. We are looking at an increase of 2.5% over the prior year for a total general fund of $1,829,786. And we will use additional uh, grant and revolving fund revenue to fully support the budget, um, which is just over $2.2 so just to give you a little bit of a snapshot here, I gave you a chart just for historical information. Um, going back a few years, you could see what the increase has been. Last year, we um, level funded, uh, meaning that our budget matched the prior year. So there was no increase in FY21 in the current year that we're in. Uh, the prior year, the increase was 6.18%. And then in FY19, it was 2.5. Um, so just some historical data that I think is good for people to uh, see just so they can see the change over the years, but pretty basic, you know, not a whole lot of changes in Waitley for FY22 um, And I'm happy to take questions if anyone has them Okay, yeah, I think we've all seen this several times now and we're good with it So now we don't do the vote until later. So yeah, at this point you can say that there's no more questions, you'll close the public hearing. Okay. And then, and then conduct the 
School community business. Okay, the radio, so business radio no more. If there's no more questions, we'll conduct. We'll close the public hearing. Okay, so now let's get on to the minutes from the March second meeting. So moved. I second. Okay, all in favor. I'm sorry. Can I say one thing? I I did want to um, correct one uh, part in there. It is under unfinished business number C or letter C, Maureen, um, when there was an update on the budget proposal. So it talks about Waitley getting ESSER funds um, and the amount in there is wrong. It says about 38,000. So I just wanted to correct that for the record. Um, Waitley will actually receive $85,841. 85,841. Yeah, and we're using 30,000 of that in support of FY22's budget. So there will still be some funds remaining for additional COVID needs. So I thought it would be good to get that number correct. Okay. Then I'm going to, I will incorporate that correction with Donna. And um, I th think we can still approve the minutes now with that correction. And we've had, um, okay, so all in favor with that correction that Shelly said. Yes. Yes. Yes, Maureen, yes. Okay. All in favor. Okay. Now we're on to public comment. And I, I know we have two public comments here. So, Shelly, would you like to go first? Yes, yeah, sure. How are you guys? Good. 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 Thanks. So, listen, I, I, I really don't want um, to be... A, a dead horse with this whole um, anti-racism um, curriculum, but but I do think that you know there there are a, a lot of concerns with with how one-sided um, it is, and I guess I will read what I was was going to read. Um, I, I don't know if there was technical difficulty with the meeting last night, um, but in in watching the the youtube video I, I was cut out and a lot of the video cameras of um the, the committee members also went off um, um during during my statement so i wasn't quite sure what what went on there um but i do have a statement and i'll and i'll just just roll with it um so again racism in our country is a problem and i have great empathy for anyone who has personally experienced being judged or mistreated based solely on the color of their skin. I believe it is important for our children to be taught about racism and how it is wrong to judge another person or to mistreat another person based on the color of their skin, religion, sexual orientation, political affiliation, etc. These reasons are why I have an issue with the anti-racism white privilege curriculum, otherwise known as critical race theory. I do think that this curriculum does more to divide our country and our community around racial issues than it does to unite. The main goal of this theory, in my opinion, is to convince young impressionable minds that if you are white, you are inherently racist. Not one person to date has been able to answer for me how this ideology is not racist itself. Furthermore, if you try to disagree or oppose this ideology, you are not only racist, but the racist of the racist, the most uneducated of the uneducated, and the most unenlightened of the unenlightened. As I first stated, racism is a problem in our country. However, this curriculum is not the solution, and I fear it will only divide our community and country more. Furthermore, it oozes with a political agenda, and hence it's why it's being taught to our children at a younger and younger age what some might refer to as indoctrination. In summary, my opinion of this curriculum is it is a radical, is it a radically progressive ideology that inserts race and racism into every aspect of our lives and will only continue to foster division, anger, and violence. Respectfully, in my opinion, it has no place in the elementary schools. Martin Luther King Jr. and his teachings, I am all for. He once said, I have a dream that my four little children will have one will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged on the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Sadly, critical race theory teaches the opposite to judge solely based on, on color. So so that's the statement that I read last night. And 
and, and I guess to um, piggyback off of that, my concerns with this, this critical race theory is that it, it smothers all dialogue about the biggest pain point in our American history, which is, which is slavery and race. It essentially, you know, states that if you don't agree with this, with this white privilege curriculum, you're racist. Nobody in this country wants to be be called a racist, and I think that that can intimidate a, a lot of people and and stifle um, in, important dialogue about different 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 opinions. Um, and to continue, I, I will say that I did find the, the comments um, of Lisa Gaylor, her, her statements from, from the teachers union. I, I did find those, those, those comments quite, quite troubling. Um, I quote, as educators, we have the platform to teach our students about racism, white supremacy, and xenophobia, and how to confront them in all their forms. As we see rising white national terrorism, we must be more vigilant in anti-racism. In addition, she urged about the gr about growing the movement and having all teachers take the Black Lives Matter pledge. So my question to the school committee is, have you thought about teaching our children about other movements? In particular, the Make America Great Again movement. It is a fact that around 75 million people voted for President Trump in this last election. Therefore, it stands as a reasonable conclusion that we would have members of our community that believe this, that believe in this movement, just as it is reasonable to conclude that since President Biden won the election, there are community members that believe in the Black Lives Matter movement. Should not both movements be taught to our children and then let them decide? Through critical thinking, which movement they identify with. So, in summary, I will try and give a very simple example of how I view this critical race theory curriculum. It is black and white. As a white person, you either acknowledge that you are racist and have white privilege, or you are the most racist of the racist. It is like saying that if you have a Black Lives Matter sign in your yard, you hate police officers. And if you have a back the blue sign, you think black lives don't matter. In my humble opinion, there's a whole lot of gray area in between that should be open for respectful dialogue. Thank you again for your time, school committee. Thank you, Shelley. Thanks. Megan, do you want to go ahead with yours? Hi there. Yeah, sure. Um, I did not write anything out. Shelley is more prepared than I am like usual so I'm just gonna wing it like usual <laughs> um, so a couple things that concern me first of all I couldn't get on the call last night I was I had a link but it was saying I was denied from the call so I guess it was just something with I needed to get on YouTube instead and that was just something I was unaware of um, so I had called today um, and Donna had let me know that that was that was a thing now where you have to request to, to speak um, I mean I, I'm I've lived here my whole life and if there's a town meeting or anything anybody has the right to speak or anything how I and I didn't request to speak yesterday because I didn't know what was going to be said you know and and I think that there needs to be an option like I think there was a town meeting on the football field one time or something like that but things are opening up enough now where I shouldn't have to request to speak at a town meeting in a in a public forum like this to to just have my opinion be hurt, basically. So I think that there needs to be another route that this is taken because when I couldn't get in last night, like that really, really was frustrating. Um, so then I go to the YouTube channel after the recording. I go to watch the recording and I'm listening and listening and listening. Shelly talks for two seconds, her screen cuts out, everybody goes black and there is not a chance in hell that everybody turned their screens off in the exact same second like it had on that thing. So whoever has manipulated this video, somebody's got to stand up for it. And everybody just kind of sweeping everything under the rug is getting ridiculous. It's getting ridiculous. Like who's the adults here and who's the children at this point? Um, so, so, so we're talking about this anti-racism thing and I get it. It's a big thing. It's huge. It's huge right now all over the, all over the country. Um, some of the girls that had sent in a statement last night that was read 
Annie Curtis being one of them, she didn't even grow up here. So, and I understand that she's got children that are going to be in school at some point. I know she's got two toddlers, I think. Um, but for, for someone to come in and speak about the past history of our school district, like, like they know firsthand, I just don't think is, is an acceptable, an acceptable opinion. Um, I grew up here. I went to Deerfield Elementary. I went to Frontier from seventh to 12th grade. And some of the people that, that had spoken up, whether that be on the Deerfield Now Facebook page or in wherever they're talking in, in these meetings and stuff, um, I, I've known them since I was eight and nine years old. And the portrayal, the, the way that they're portraying things is manipulated to be one sided. So in my opinion, we did not grow up being like white privilege everything. That just because we had a primarily white school district does not mean we are racist. It does not mean we were terrible to children other than white children. We had, I know in my high school class, we had three black kids with our with our class. And honestly, I could talk to them and I still talk to them every single day. And most and most usually, I mean, from from what I've talked to them before. They didn't feel like we had secluded them ever or or anything. So I don't know. It's just a concern to me that we're we're making this such an insanely huge issue that reading, math, English, sentence structure, grammar, um, language, everything else doesn't matter anymore because Black Lives Matter and and this this anti racism is all that matters now. That's all we hear about everywhere, um, and it's just it's just insane to me. I mean, school is school. And when I was growing up, my parents were the ones that taught me about heterosexual relationships, homosexual relationships. Like this was something that we learned in home and our families. Um, and hearing that a fourth grade teacher is talking to children about um, transgender things and, and homosexual relationships and stuff like that. Like we never even talked about normal relation, like normal hetero heterosexual relationships in fourth grade. So I don't know why it's becoming a thing where we're just talking to these children younger and younger and younger. Like I'm just waiting for my daughter to go to kindergarten next year and come back with a whole paper that she has to write on, on just all these different relationships that she doesn't even comprehend in her mind. So we, ha we have to really take a step back and think like, are these eight and nine year olds really understanding what we're talking about? Or are you just pushing this agenda more and more and younger and younger and younger and younger? Um, Along with that, this anti-bullying thing that we have been talking about for years, which is so important as, as parents, students, teachers, anybody in this district, anybody with kids, anybody growing up, it's it's still happening. So what I see lately on, on Facebook and um, all the things, so Deerfield Now, Shelly had posted something about her, her thoughts. She did not give her in, like a big opinion. She said, I would like to hear everybody's thoughts on this topic. And then... Now there's an inclusion Deerfield group, an inclusion Deerfield group of, of everybody that's basically just pushing the anti-racism stuff, screenshotting her, screenshotting her question to everybody, putting it over there and everybody is bashing her. Now is that, is that what we're trying to teach our children about anti-bullying? Because to me, that's bullying. That's bullying at another level. Whether that be, you know, whatever topic you're bullying on, that's still bullying. So if, if a parent wants to come in here and preach to you and have papers written up to you talking about how amazing they are because they love this anti-racism thing, look at what else they're doing because these people are also obviously not, not following in line with this anti-bullying you know, agenda that we've got going on because they're doing it to just other parents in the district. And it's, it's just getting insane. Like I have to hear from, from, from Shelly, like I feel like I'm being personally attacked now. Or, you know, do we need to move out of town if we speak our opinion because they're going to come burn our houses down? This is ridiculous. Like, it, it, it's, and this is what they want. We, we are white privileged because we're white. We're not allowed to say our side because then we're racist. And the fact that that, that is something that's even happening in our world, it is just mind blowing to me. And I, this is why, this is why this, yes, it's a topic of discussion. It's always been a topic of discussion. We've talked about racism all through our lives, we've talked about um, white white supremacy and stuff. But I have sat 
and listened to my son's history teacher talk about white supremacy for hours and hours and hours on end without ever bringing up Antifa and every other group that's out there besides the white supremacists. So, and I, and I've, and I've spoken with him before and said, if you're going to teach one thing, teach it all. There is no space for opinions when you are teaching history and social studies. This needs to be fact-based. And if you can't do that, then don't teach. Maybe history or social studies isn't for you. But anyway, I just needed to say my piece because I wasn't able to last night because I was denied entry to the meeting. So anyway, I think that was it. But I would really, really like somebody to go look at that YouTube video from last night because that if that is not manipulated, I mean, if, if everybody is looking at that and believes that that's the truth, everybody's in the twilight zone at this point because it was so very obvious that whoever ran that meeting and whoever posted that to YouTube did something to that meeting. So that's all I'm going to say about that. And I just, I just want to ask a, a, a quick question too, because when did the dialogue last year before um, the pandemic hit and everything went virtual, these school committee meetings were open for, for dialogue. Like you could, I mean, we had, we would have questions and Mr. Modesto would be able to converse with us. When, when did the format change so much where it the is just. That. It changed after we were zoom bombed by some very inappropriate material in an open meeting. And after that, it was announced. Um, the information was out there uh, multiple times. Every agenda would list the, how you would give your public comment. You could either submit it in advance and it would be read, or you can ask to have an invitation. But and, I don't know if you heard about that meeting, but there was a lot of... There was uh, now, now that you bring it up, Maureen, I, 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 do, I do recall that. Um, yeah. You, you know, obviously, a very in, inappropriate thing, but I, I, I just miss the, the dialogue, the respectful dialogue of opinions that are different. Um, in, in coming out of this pandemic where everybody has been quarantined and, and so isolated, I just sincerely feel like we're, we're, we're losing, um, you know, the ability to be empathetic to different people. And it's so much easier to be a, a, a social media bully in, in things of, of that nature. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm just very, you know, I'm passionate about this. I said, I should have started, I should have started um, this meeting by saying, I acknowledge and Meg acknowledges and appreciates all the effort and time um, and hours you, you put towards the school in our communities. You, you have a no win situation where you are trying to make everybody happy. Um, and that's just, that's just downright in, impossible. So we do acknowledge that and, and, and we do appreciate it. We're just really concerned of where this, this, this path is headed for, for our children and, and for our community, because if we, start adopting in these these ideal these ide ideological I know that didn't come out right but these ideologies where you either agree with it or you can't even talk about it, it it's just it's just going down a down a down a scary road um, so I, I do miss being able to converse with you and being able to get your your opinions on it and to you know immediately feel figure out how we can bridge the situation and and, and make it better for our community i mean it feels very kind of um rigid and, and isolated to just read a statement and then, and then that's it um but i i don't envy the, the the position that that you're in but um certainly my opinions aren't meant to divide the community um, but I just, also have to say, I heard your whole statement last night, so I don't know what happened with the recording because it came across live fine to to me. I heard it. Yeah, I also heard it, um, and I did appreciate that you spoke out. Um, I commend you both for for um, sharing your opinion. Um, I will go back and watch the YouTube, and I've actually told other people to watch it too. Um, I thought last night's meeting was very interesting, um, both sides. And I absolutely agree with both of you that social media is not the place um, for this conversation. 
Um, it's very heated between parents. Um, but I do, you know, I don't think that this should be something that's political for either side um, because it's really not. And I think Amanda made a really good point last night. It's about humanity. It's not about politics. And we really need to put that aside when we're thinking about this. Um, Megan, I also went to Frontier. I graduated from Frontier. Um, and like you, I didn't blatantly notice racism. However, I do have friends um, of other races who went Frontier that did notice it. Um, and that's kind of what we need to teach our children to notice those, those racisms that aren't obvious. And I think that's part of what this is about. Um, we didn't see it, we weren't taught. And that's a problem and, that, and it needs to be taught. And if you're unhappy with the way it's being taught, then you know this committee is is open should be open to everyone's opinion um and and really you know you have to look at the whole picture like the the idea of this is good for our children it really is um it's and it's just started and i'm sure it's going to evolve um and you know i i can't see that this is a negative thing for our kids like i went to frontier there were people who are racist there, not only students, but teachers. I know you talked mostly about students not being racist, um, but it happened with faculty too. Um, and I know some of these stories and I know some people that were, were victims of it. Um, so I think this is, is, it's definitely a positive thing and we really shouldn't make it about politics. Yeah, so, oh, sorry. So what is the um, Black Lives Matter pledge that the lady that spoke last night was talking about then? Because isn't that kind of like a political thing? Yeah, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about it either. It was the not on social media, so I I didn't see all those. So that was not from social media. Yeah. That was that it was, was the school union district thirty eight. That was the statement that she read from our union thirty eight teachers union. That was their statement. And you can go back and watch. I'm sorry. Correct. So the association made a statement. Um, Lisa Gaylord. There, yeah, there's a, if you look at the Black Lives Matters um, website, there's a educational component about, and some of the stuff that we're working on um, it has similar wording to that you can find there. It's not all of it, um, but there's some similar parallels. And so, you know, this, their association can do we don't control that. The school committee doesn't control that. And the administration doesn't control that. You know, Ken, you know, they're signing on to um, the, some of the, idea, the ideas from the educational portion of Black Lives Matters, which is very similar to some of the work that we are doing as well. And I think when you talk about what's happening in the curriculum, there hasn't been huge curriculum changes that have been done at Waitley Elementary. This is the Waitley Elementary Committee meeting, and we're at Frontier. We can talk about the Frontier, you know, separately. Um, you know, we're talking about culturally responsive education, and so basically, let me give you kind of an example of that. If you're teaching a science class and you're talking about static electricity, and when, I think you can all remember the lesson that we did, where you rub a balloon against your head, and then you stick it to something, and you talk about the electron, the electrical charges, and how that created happens. Well, if you have a student of you know, a black student or African-American student in your class and you do that, it doesn't work. So if you're a teacher teaching a group of, let's say third graders, static electricity, and that's your lesson plan, you're not having a culturally responsive lesson plan because you're making one, you're singling out one person to be different than the rest of the activity of everyone else. And so when you thought, when you looked at, you were there last night and you, know, you saw Sarah Mitchell and Kim McCarthy's presentation is that the approach that we're doing on this, okay, is that we are trying to make sure that as we write curriculum, we are looking at that so that we aren't excluding others. We aren't excluding having lessons that are pushing people away. And that we're including everybody and recognizing everyone's background as we as we create curriculum and so forth. So this indoctrination and that kind of thing, I think it's 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 kind of it's pushing an agenda. There's agendas on both sides politically, and I think that's what's kind of you know talking about that. Um, you know, we're not talking about that. We're, we're talking about, and so you can make extremes on both ways, um, but the school is not. 
We are we're talking about creating a curriculum that looks at all students in the classrooms and makes all students feel welcome um, and making sure that our, our lessons are diverse, that we are teaching books that are written all by white males. You know, we want to, you know, we want to make sure there's, there's diversity across the board in those things. And so, you know, if there's examples that you can bring to me where that's where that's not being done or it's being done in excess in one direction, that's the kind of data I need. But the generalizations, you know, aren't sure we aren't teaching white privilege at Waitley Elementary School. The professional development that was working with the teachers talked about it so that you could have an understanding of what it's like to be a single child of color in a room full of white students and what you might be missing because of your own views and your own cultural biases, which are true. We have cultural biases. I sit in a position as a white male leader and I'm told and reminded by it all the time of you know, what advantages I have when I walk in a room of being a 6'6 male, okay? And you have to understand those things if you're gonna reach all your students in front of you. So that's kind of, you know, where we're going at here, and if you're, you know, I think, and I agree with Beth said that clearly if, if, if there's concerns about that and examples of that, that needs to be brought to our attention that if we're, we're, we're going too far, we're going astray from those things, okay? And so just simply send us emails, send us, come here, talk to us here. Um, but that's, that's, not the, that's not the goal of a culture responsive classroom. So thank you so much for those comments, Darius, and, and also Bethany, I do really appreciate it. Um, I, I will say, though, that politics has truly invaded every aspect of our lives, whether it be professional sports, whether it be entertainment, whether it be the workplace, whether it be our schools. So to say that something either way, to your point, Mr. Modesto, whether it be right wing or or left wing, to say that that things aren't political, I think things are more political now than they have ever been in, in my lifetime. And, and you asked for specifics. So I will give you a specific, and this was pulled off of um, your website, the Frontier Regional School Cultural Responsive Teaching and Learning. It has since been taken down, but these are the words of the Director of Education, Sarah Mitchell. This work comes as a critical juncture given the national focus of equality, so social justice, and racism. As educators, we know that long-term goals are accomplished through the lessons that we share with our students and the subsequent changes that they make in our world. This is how young activists are developed. This is how systemic racism is, is dismantled. I am uncomfortable with the director of education saying that as a goal of this development is to, is, is to develop young activists. And I do, I do correlate that with a young activist of being part of Black Lives Matter, which if you do research Black Lives Matter, that is a Marxist organization that believes in communism and socialism and the destruction of capitalism. So, but that's not what that statement says. And, and being an activist is being an active member of your community, it's not saying it doesn't there to say to be an activist in the Black Lives Matter movement or an activist in any which way, but being an activist to change. Because what our country's gone through this year, okay, clearly there's systematic racism throughout the nation in, in in areas. Okay. And so to not to say that we want our next generation to address that, be active in that, I think should be a goal of our school. We don't want to be, we don't want our students to leave our schools and sit on their hands. We want them so to be you, active participants. Will you be hiring somebody to um, like the position of um, Amanda to start with the, the, the activism of the Make America Great Again movement? Or is that is that going to be part of the, the curriculum? Make America Great Again movement is a political movement. And Black Lives Matter is not? The, 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 the school district has not adopted Black Lives Matter. But the teachers union is is urging that every teacher take the Black Lives Matter pledge. Yep. It's, they, they have the right to do that. OK, and I'm sorry, it's not I am I am very passionate about this and, and I don't mean to be argumentative. Um, but I can ask can I ask you the question that, that so the issue I'm hearing is that I'm not hearing that where the rubber meets the road in the classroom. I'm hearing. 
political. I'm hearing political statements about statements, you know, on the website and that kind of thing. Whereabouts, when you talk about this curriculum change, where is the curriculum in the classroom changing in what, and if we're talking about white privilege, can that be, is that a healthy conversation? Is there an so, advantage to a, a, a white person to a black person statistically in, in the court systems? You know, I mean, this, you, statistically, you can look at all this stuff and there's truths there. So you, we shouldn't be discussing that. So my point is that especially at the elementary school level, that the focus should be on reading, writing and arithmetic in teaching our children how to critically think for themselves to not start this white privilege conversation while their values and opinions are still being developed. The I, white I feel privilege conversation has not been had at Wheatley Elementary School. It's not part of any curriculum that we've approved through, you know, the for the elementary school to be going through. Chrissy, has it been, as far as your knowledge, is that being taught in the elementary school? No, that's what, so I don't understand. It's, no, and I, I think, think people that, are being oversensitive to, again, the political spectrum of things rather than the actual, what is actually happening to our curriculum in the classroom. But didn't that lady last night, Amanda, she said you're either racist or anti-racist, that there's no in-between, but then she's, then she's on Facebook blasting, blue, People complaining about the blue lives, the blue, the thin blue line flags in Deerfield. It's like she's she's saying one thing and then bringing all these gray areas into it. And it's just saying that. I mean, I would never I would never say. I was a racist person, but that that doesn't I don't, like I can say I'm, I'm totally not racist whatsoever. And she'd be like, well, you're white, so you're racist. It's just like this brainwashing of kids that you're saying, well, just because you're white, you're racist is just like. But you keep on saying we're brainwashing the kids with that, but we're not doing that with the, the kids. So oh, that's well, why, that's that's where, that's why I, want to, I want to be based on like, so you're bringing this into the school committee here for this discussion. We could have this discussion offline, but this is a school committee meeting, the operations of the school committee. So, you know, if you bring a complaint forward, what I'm asking for, if you can give me the data of the complaint, then I can address the complaint or, you know, we can talk all evening about the back and forth of the, of, of, of you know, politics and how politics does happen. I absolutely agree with you that, um, Shelley, that politics does come into school. We can't pretend it doesn't because it's, it's, it's everywhere. But it is the school's job to try to push politics out and try to it, be mainstream middle. Um, and so, so I, hearing all that, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is when you come to bring to school committee, you have to give me, I mean, you don't have to bring it to school committee, you're going to it straight to me. But if you're going to go to school committee, which is also the, you know, the bosses of the district, um, you know, I guess I'm going to need evidence other than hearsay or, you know, feelings about the things, because I understand that this, it's, this is difficult work. And it's also because of the spectrum of the work, it gets people nervous that it's going to go toward one way or go toward another way. And, and I'm saying that right now, the children, um, and there's no plan to, um, to be exposed in the way that you're saying that they're being exposed to. It's going to be grade level and age appropriate conversations. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, um, I think we should move on, though. But um, we really appreciate your comments and this dialogue. Um, and likewise, likewise, thank you very much for for the engagement in the in the dialogue. It is greatly appreciated. So, All right, we're, we're going to sign off now. Have a okay. nice day, you guys. Have Honestly, nice day. Truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're on to the vote for the budget, um, the final budget as presented. So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 So all in favor. Shelly, do we, for the notes, you got to make sure, you know, the, you have to actually say the budget you're voting. So you got to get say the okay. number out loud. Sorry, it, it, it's like the Let one thing they're gonna call you on is a technicality okay. on a two million dollar budget. Okay. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> you, we're gonna you can vote everything else <laughs> on the Waitley Elementary School fiscal year twenty two budget. Um, total budget of one million eight hundred twenty nine thousand seven hundred eighty six dollars. Um, which is a 2.5% 2, 2 increase from the year before or 
$602 increase from the year before. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So, so we take another vote, uh, make a motion and take another vote. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Yes. 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 Okay, good. All right. I, I just I just want to say something. I, I, I was listening to what Shelly and Megan were talking about. And correct me if I'm wrong, public comment is public comment. Somebody can read something. We shouldn't, I personally don't think we should get into debate. Darius is right about if they have questions or a problem that send Darius an email or his door is always open. But personally, I don't think we should be getting into a debate. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, Bob, I think you're right. Normally, I, I don't get, as I did last night, because we, we had a really full agenda, I basically said, you know, we're not going to have debate. I, tonight, I felt, um, you know, they've been at a meeting prior, and they're not, they're not um, hearing an explanation to some of their questions. So I, I overindulge, and if I, you know, took too much of your time, I, I apologize. No, um, I, but, you know, I mean, because, right, you technically you get public comment, and we, we move on, but they wanted to there's a discussion there and I don't know how we have it with the greater population. And maybe that's something that the school has to have a, because not everybody who, you know, they were kind enough to come on and have the discussion. A lot of people who have opposing views simply avoid those, those discussions. So I, you know, oh, I agree. And you gave some specific answers. So that yeah, was good so, for the public to hear. But you're right. You're right. We got to, you have to be careful. If we had a full agenda of other stuff that would have been, you know, you know, and it's not even on the agenda. Technically, you have to be talking about something that's on the agenda. That's right. And we were the, the other thing, I thought Shelly was going to bring up that they want to dedicate the scoreboard in the gym. And I thought she was going to say something about that, and she didn't. But it's something maybe in maybe our next meeting we should have it if if we – So we, should, we need to have it on the agenda with a vote according to our policy. I'm not sure what, you're, what you were talking about. Well, Shelly sent – uh, Donna to an email about um, not donating. Um, dedicating. De thank you. Dedicating <laughs> the board to Stephen Keyes and Gary Lawrence. That's what I thought Shelly was going to talk about a little bit tonight. And she's the one that sent it in that if we could do that. And, you know, Are I don't we have getting a new scoreboard or is it the one we have? It's the one we have now, okay. as far as I know. And um, I guess they want to put a little plaque up there in memory of, of Stephen Keyes and Gary Lawrence. So, And I don't have a problem with it, but there again, we should have it maybe in our main meeting. Yeah. That we can have it in there and stuff. Yeah, so we were going to, um, as part of the budget, we were going to talk about um, – I had proposed to Darius that we talk about expectations for full day pre-K in the fall, but uh, we probably should table that to May and maybe we can invite Amy Zioli as well. Right now we are, I, I don't want to misspeak, but planning wise across the districts, we're planning for the full day next year. So um, I just want to make sure I'm not misstepping in. Waitley, Waitley normally had a pre day did you, did you have a half day prior? Um, the kids go home at one thirty. Right, but year year before was a full day. Full day, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we are planning. We are planning a full day preschool next year. And we have a very very large list of interested folks. Great. The the other thing I was that I brought up during last night's meeting was possibly that we could do in person uh, meetings. Oh yeah. yes, that's right. So, I mean, um, I know it's not on the agenda, but I, I just wanted to bring it up. Maybe planning of, planning of meetings doesn't have to be on the agenda. It's business. You right. can plan meetings anytime. Okay. I, I, think, I, think, I, I think after last night, listening to some comments and stuff, maybe we'll just wait till September. And I'm, I'm itching to get back. You know, I'm the oldest one in this group and I've been vaccinated and stuff. So, and I hope when you have a chance to get vaccinated, but maybe, you know, we'll just wait until September when everybody feels safer and and we can go from there but i just thought it'd be uh, nice go ahead yeah it would be nice to have them in person i think i might be the only one who's not vaccinated um 
maybe I would be by then, but I doubt it. Um, the only thing is we'd have to figure out the public comment and any other logistical issues. I don't know if it would be uh, filmed by FCAT, because if we're in person, we wouldn't ha be able to record it and do the live stream, would we? So that's the, I, you know, I have it on my list to talk with the attorney about, about what's the legal requirements, because FCAT before, sometimes they came and sometimes they didn't. You know what I mean? There's kind of a, these being recording the way they are has become a, a luxury for the citizens, so to speak, in the sense of having to not having to go to meetings, they can turn them on, they're recorded, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I don't know if now we're responsible recording our own meetings. That's, I got to find that out legally because, yeah. you know, the, let's say FCAT doesn't come, do, do we have to do something else? Do I put a Chromebook in the front of the room with the camera on, <laughs> you know, uh, low quality? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll, to, I'll get those answers. Yeah, we'll have to get those answers before we go in person. So it yeah, seems maybe, like maybe yeah. May might not be the time. Well, May is the next one. So, you know, we kind of have kind of have to know now because I have to start preparing for it. But if maybe let's not do May and we can have a discussion maybe in June, close the year out. It's usually a quick one. Um, you know, we could also do it in the gym. You know, I mean, you could do a big spacing if you really wanted to. We all sit at our own table kind of deal. Um, that's how we did Deer. We did Deerfield. So Deerfield did an in-person one in December. And, um, you know, it, it, it was fine, except what I did is I was in charge of the technology and in charge of running the meeting and the technology went downhill fast and I like, couldn't get the camera to follow and then it wasn't picking things up. And so I think I was even caught swearing on film. Um, so I'm trying to get the darn thing going. So um, anyway, so it was such a disaster. I'm like, I'm not doing that again. But um, I think things have gotten better. Technology has actually gotten better too. The Google Meets have gotten better too. Hey, I hate to cut this meeting short. We got to adjourn because oh, yeah. we yeah, have right, well, more health. Do but I hear a motion? A motion? Uh, second. All right. All in favor. Aye. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank See you. Guys. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for your support.